You are here right now because you wanted to know how I hacked my brain to increase my joy and connection in all of my relationships. And so let me start with why I needed to hack my brain. Because I started to notice that there was a drift going on in my relationships When we're in the drift, we use all kinds of distraction techniques to navigate it. And some of these techniques might be controlling, micromanaging, defending, protecting, withdrawing. You just name it. There's there's a whole bunch of them. These are just a few that I listed. But there's like 50 different ways that we can drift through our relationships. And that happens when we, as an effect of the stress in our relationships. So you, I want to say, first of all, you can be in a totally committed, healthy relationship and still feel disconnected or drifting. So let's face it. Medicine has us running on empty most times. In the area that suffers the most is the area at home. So the first thing I want you to know is that you are not alone. You are not alone. Thousands of medical families have been surveyed and the number one concern that they have right now in their life is loneliness. Let me say that again. Loneliness is their top concern. And these are people that are surrounded by people all day. (laughs) yet they feel disconnected. So I was led to say, okay, so how do we solve this problem? These are people who are married in stable marriages, yet they feel their relationship is off. These are people who have smart kids, good kids, educated kids, kids that aren't getting in trouble, and yet they feel like they can't connect with them. Things feel dull. Things feel lifeless. Things feel boring. These are all committed individuals who think that this is just the way it is, that this is just the way it's going to be until they retire from medicine, that this is just the way that it has to be. And I want you to know that you're lying to yourself. You are lying because you can stop the drift right now by learning how to pay attention. Even if nothing changes with the hours of medicine, even if if nothing changes in medicine, even if you're exhausted, you can change this without working any harder or doing anything more. So let me illustrate this concept of a story from when I from childhood for me. Um, When we were kids, we went to the beach with my family and my cousins, like all the cousins. And my one cousin was like seven years old at the time. And she was floating on a raft in the ocean. She was enjoying herself and floating along. And all of a sudden, you know, one parent was on the beach, one was in the water. Everybody thought the child was with the other one. So Little did they know that she was drifting and she didn't realize that she was drifting because she was just a young kid and she was laying on the float and just playing in the water and she was drifting. She was headed down current. She drifted probably four or five or six lifeguard stands away and suddenly we're looking for her and we're all panicked, right? For an hour and a half, a half an hour, hour, whatever it was, it felt like forever. Um, We were scared, and thankfully, we found her. But here's the, the, the moral of the story. She had no idea what was going on because she was just drifting. She was just drifting further and further from those that she loved the most. She was on autopilot. She was just drifting with the current of the status quo. And this is where some of your relationships are right now. Some of you are waiting for someone else to jump in and take responsibility and bring the raft home. (laughs) We have all been stuck in the drift. We've all been stuck on autopilot. We've all been stuck in survival 
survival mode at one point or another. And these patterns that we get into are really the root cause of your disconnection in all of your relationships. When we are living in survival mode, everything feels like a threat to our safety. So a little comment or a look the wrong way, something that's out of order, that pokes you, all come as threats to your safety and security. Now, we're not saying that to ourselves. We're not saying, I don't feel safe right now. No, no, no. We're acting out. We're, we're nitpicking. We're criticizing. We are being a perfectionist. We are being people pleasers. However it shows up for you, however that pattern shows up for you, chances are it's been running in your life since childhood. And these patterns that have been running in your life since childhood are playing out the same scenarios over and over again with different faces. (laughs) Um, But you're going to see that these patterns are the root cause of your disconnection. And along with this chronic survival mode that comes from working in the field of medicine, um, these patterns have been accelerated over the years. Um, We have been trained and conditioned to forego bathroom breaks, to skip meals, to work to the point of physical and mental exhaustion. We have been conditioned that it's a badge of honor, okay? Because that's what they told us in medical school, in nursing school, and they might not have said it with those words, but the message we received was that You were weak if you needed to care for yourself. You were weak if you needed a break. You were weak if you couldn't handle this. Those were the messages that were sent to us. Even if they weren't spoken to us, those were the messages that we learned. And so we've been trained to stuff any emotional connection with our patients. We've been trained to stuff any emotional connection with our colleagues. We've been trained to stuff all of these things in our training because it's been seen as weakness. If you have fatigue, exhaustion, emotional drain, it's seen as weakness. And this mentality has carried over from decades of misinformation on emotions and on the nervous system. And the really what true strength looks like is a person who is able to navigate all of this in a healthy way from a healthy nervous system, not stuffing it, not denying it, not numbing it, all of the things that we do when we don't actually deal with the root problem. Um, So we need to rethink some of these patterns before they interfere with our relationships and rob the joy right out of our lives and out of our work. So we entered medicine because we desire to help other human beings. And yet something has shifted in our hearts and souls. We've become cynical and I get it. It's a survival response. If you have, you have felt hard things and you see hard things every single day, and if you really felt them, you fear that you'd crumble into a ball because you wouldn't know what to do with them. And I get it because I hear stories at my dinner time table. I'm not here to tell you another story. Um, What I'm here to tell you is that if you gave yourself space to process those emotions, you would just be human. Do not buy into the lies that you've been taught in your training that having emotions, being fatigued, taking breaks is weakness. That is a lie. And we need to stop that lie right now. Brene Brown tells us that we cannot selectively numb emotions. So what that means is when we numb painful emotions, we also numb positive emotions. And like Pavlov's dogs, we have been programmed to receive rewards and praise 
for self-abandonment. Now, like I said, they didn't say it outright, but we received praise, we received rewards, and we got that dopamine hit for abandoning ourselves. So let's just stick for a moment with this um, emotional abandonment theme, because when we start compartmentalizing our lives and our emotions, it robs us of joy, it robs us of pleasure. So this self-abandonment training that we've received and labeled as normal (laughs) is becoming increasingly uncomfortable for us. It's becoming dissatisfying. And some of you right now will recognize this dissatisfaction and think, if I change jobs, maybe I don't love my spouse anymore. Maybe it's the hospital system. Maybe if I change hospital systems, maybe if I go to partner, maybe if I go work for the hospital, changing any of these things are not going to solve the problem. I'm sure you've said to yourself, maybe after vacation, I'll feel better. None of these things are going to address the disconnection problem unless we address it from within. The problem needs to be addressed and plucked out at the root from inside. So a bit about me. I've been in medicine for 30 plus years. I'm married to medicine. (laughs) I am one of 12 other family members in medicine, and it is our dinnertime talk, which is sometimes challenging for the other half of the family that's in education. I mean, we're sitting there and we're talking about some pretty gruesome stuff. My son's in trauma ICU, so he sees all kinds of things. The whole family is critical care focused, and You know, medical professionals, as medical professionals, as nurses, as doctors, as PAs, as uh, CRNAs, nurse practitioners, whatever you are in the field of medicine, or if you're married to medicine, we have to keep in mind that medical professionals carry with them the sadness of the horrific visuals that they see of the traumatic situations every single day. Medical professionals are with people at in their absolute worst moments of life and death. So the heaviness is real because human suffering is real, right? And, and we, we are accustomed to it. This is the life of a frontline professional dealing with daily trauma on, on, on every average day, right? So the stress of our work is affecting our relationships with the people who are the most important to us. So how does that show up? We shut down the needs of others because quite frankly, we've had enough. It leaves our spouses feeling minimized or neglected. And so what does this all mean to you about me? (laughs) What, What do I have to do with any of this, right? It means that my finger is on the pulse of reality, on the reality of medicine right now. And although I've left the bedside to help families of those who are at the bedside. I get it. I know the stigma of feeling like you've got to hide what, you've, what you're experiencing. It doesn't feel safe to expose your feelings, uh, that you're feeling this disconnect in your life. It doesn't seem right after all the training and all the sacrifice and the satisfaction uh, is only going to come at some magical point in the future. That's what we tell ourselves. We tell ourselves, when I retire, I can, I can take care of myself. When uh, things slow down, I can uh, work on myself. But guess what? That time never, ever comes. It's never going to slow down. Medicine does not stop. People continue to get sick, die. People call out sick. They leave us short-staffed. Crises happen, backups happen, all of the things happen. This is medicine. So what we get to do is we get to call on science 
and neuroscience. Neuroscience is a hot topic lately, and thankfully, I have been studying the implications of neuroplasticity and practical ways to accelerate transformation by disrupting those ingrained patterns that you've had for, 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 for a long time. And I've been studying this for over a decade now, and I've actually written a book on the topic. <laughs> and so here's the difference of how I put it into the world. I've, I've always been about practical application. I've always been about simplicity. Because let's face it, reading journal articles about neuroplasticity and habit change does not produce the goals any more than reading medical books will make you a physician. Okay, so just reading a journal is not going to change your life. It requires applying, testing, shifting. It requires learning with experimenting with new ideas, new habits, building new things, little micro shifts into your life and into your work. And yeah, that's how I help people transform medicine from the inside out, one micro shift at a time. So right now, we're going to have our first action step. Right now, I'd like to invite you to reflect for one moment on what patterns of disconnection are you noticing right now in your relationships. Write down as many patterns as you can detect. You know, they could be perfectionism. They could be a critical spirit. It, it could be that you are um, cynical, right? What are the patterns you're noticing in your relationships? They could be work relationships, your kids, home relationships. The next question I want you to answer is, why do you desire to disrupt this pattern and break the cycle of disconnection? Why? Do you want to feel close again to your spouse or your kids? Or maybe you want to have a relationship with your parents. Or maybe you want to feel close again to somebody that was, was a great friend to you all through schooling. Or maybe you want to improve your problem-solving skills or understand dynamics on how to change them. Or it's possible you want to learn how to prevent escalation of drama and tension so you can maximize your peace. Or maybe <laughs> you just want to learn how to play and, and have connection through play, right? And creativity. Because you've been so busy studying, maybe you don't even know how to play. Or maybe for the first time, you're trying to figure out what makes you tick because you have pushed yourself aside your whole life. What is your why? What is it for you? What is it for you? Write down in detail as many things as you could think of as possible. Because when we journal about this, we can go back to these and call on them as your anchor. And as we use this as an anchor and make tiny micro shifts, you can get to your desired destination. This anchor is going to ground you. This is your why. So, the cold hard truth is that every reaction to stress is happening in your nervous system and can be tackled one micro shift at a time. So how do I do that? How do I do that? I do that by um, working with resetting, right? That's what we do. We start with resetting your distracted reactivity. We are resetting that distraction that comes up all the time for you and makes you react with your people pleasing, your perfectionism, or all the other things. And we call that stress management. <laughs> and what all of that leads to is intentional conscious leadership. And I have a few tools that I use to help you learn how to make these micro shifts one tiny shift at a time. The powerful presence plan is something that you can call on in the middle of your shift, in the middle of your workday, to really ground yourself and gain 
gain control of what's happening inside. The calming nervous system reset formula and the emotional triage toolkit. These are going to be your toolboxes um, to take with you at work. These are little tiny micro shifts that you can make all day long. The second thing we're going to do is we are going to reset your relationships because when there is stress that is causing disconnection, distractedness, reactivity, we have communication breakdowns. And so we are going to learn how to have transformational communication, communication that's clear and kind. And, and you have the clear and kind communication template to do that, right? You're going to have stress reducing conversation and communication prompts. You're going to have a whole decision making template so that you can make clear decisions quickly by going through X, Y, and Z. And what's that going to do? That is going to amp up your confidence. It's going to amp up your confidence in your relationships and in everything that you do. Um, so what you're, what you're going to achieve there is communication mastery. And the, the last thing is we're going to tackle and disrupt some of those stress-related patterns. We are going to... Um, tackle and disrupt some of the biggies that are interfering with your work-life balance. And we're going to use the Courageous Alignment Code and the Restful Energy Reserve Kit, the Power Principle. These are all things that um, we have in our toolbox that help us to create micro shifts one tiny step at a time using the focus formula. So, all of these things are in the, in the program, Reset Your Relationships, Go From Adversaries to All-In Partnerships. Now, who doesn't want that? I mean, you need to have all-in partnerships even in your relationships with your kids. This works whether you're in a marriage, whether you're in a relationship, or whether you have relationships with kids, or even relationships with your family. You can apply this in your work and at home with your team members and all of the things that you're doing. So if you are interested in uh, finding out more information about this Reset Your Nervous System, uh, Reset Your Relationships program, uh, please reach out and I'll send you a one sheet which has everything that you're going to need in order to um, to to tackle all of these issues. I'm Doreen Steenland, and it's been a delight to be with you. I hope and pray that all of these things are going to fall into place for you. And if you want to begin working on this, then I would love to walk alongside you. Have a great day.